what should I be doing in these next two weeks? And yeah. so one was, I better get the campaign done because I really yeah, want to complete the campaign, <laughs> fight the malignant. But now, <laughs> like, if you had places to go to, like, dig deep. In his holy name. Dig deep on clearing the fog and dig deep on finding the altars because those are going to carry into this. Yeah, all that stuff will carry over with you. Okay, so then. Happy Diablo family. Yep. They're, they're really good at that, that extra teasing, eh? Yep. Nice. Diablo family. Yeah. Woo! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I talked to him I too guess, much. All <laughs> things Diablo. <laughs> Make it louder? Uh, it is. Yeah, it's Max. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Uh, and of course, we have uh, Chris Leal. Uh, lead UX designer on Immortal. And Ryan Clay. Can wait. Hi, I'm the senior narrative designer on Immortal. So uh, we are actually starting off today's show with uh, some Diablo Immortal uh, conversations. Uh, Is that better? Also, I, I do want to mention we're using new fancy mics today. Um, we've been we've been joking around, and uh, I call them the Good Britney time? Spears okay. mic. Right. Um, Rod calls them the Janet Jackson mic. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Jackson. There it's because I'm older. Rod, uh, but is not wearing one I of them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to see the size of my head, and the ability to put that little wire around this size of noggin is impossible. So, therefore, I've passed. Disappointing. <clears throat> but he does have a really good impression of Britney Spears. I am not doing it now. Oh. I am not doing it. Okay, maybe we can get it out I, of I'll, him. I'll knot my shirt later. It'll be good. <laughs> maybe we can get it out of him during Q&A. Someone asked that question in, twi in Twitch chat. We'll, we'll make sure to bring that up during Q&A. And okay. there you go. You're just on the spot and you have to answer it. So. I think it's important that like last time you clarified what we were doing was the campfire, which is more of a casual. Oh God, right? We're just kind of giving updates. This. You know, we just want to be able to talk and to the community. That. Yes. This and is more of a developer stream, so it's a bit more official. Yes. But one of the things we wanted to recognize, too, is that, like, um, we, as a family of, of games, uh, we always, there's lots of cool stuff happening within uh, in Diablo, and so we want to take, we don't always want to just be focused on just D4. We want, anytime there's something big or really interesting happening within Diablo, we want to be able to talk about it, you know. I could imagine we're going to have a season 29 conversation for Diablo 3 at some point in the future. Um, and so one of the things we're going to look at, one to do today was not just oh, talk okay. about, you know, we are definitely going to talk about season one on Diablo 4. And uh, for some reason, Adam has structured this to be as tantric as possible. We'll get there, trust us, but it's going to take a minute. So, but what we really want to look at as well is we want to talk about um, a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about what's the preseason before we go into season one. We're going to talk about you know what's going on with D four today because we actually have some news about today. Um, another tease didn't mean that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then we want to talk a little bit about Diablo Immortal because something pretty incredible is happening in Diablo Immortal, which is in nearly a decade we're having our first new. Diablo character class is being revealed. And we wanted to reveal it here on this stream. So, you know, one of the things about, great things about Blizzard well, is the uh, SFD Maybe team, the story and franchise, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Blizzard video, and everything that they do around cinematics. And we thought, how could we introduce a new character class without having right. a kick ass video to go with it? So, without further ado, May we present to you yeah. the new Diablo character class coming to Diablo Immortal. I mentioned very, very it like 30 soon. minutes ago. The darkness has always been with us. Whoa. And humanity is right to fear it. Oh, that's hot. The darkness wants to consume you and all you love. But my kind claim its power. We get to be a vampire?
humanity is right to fear the darkness. But I am a blood knight, and the darkness fears me. Yeah, but this is for immortal though. Not Diablo. Yo, we need this class for Diablo 4. There we have it. <laughs> the new class coming to Diablo and Diablo Immortal. Uh, it's the Blood Knight. July 13th. That's July like 13th. A little over a week away. Exactly. Oh. Sounds like there might have been some encoding issues. Exactly. Yeah, I know that some people are talking about there, there's a little bit of hitching on it and so forth. I, I will say that we actually do have that trailer uh, that will be on a blog for, on DiabloImmortal.com immediately after the stream. Uh, so people can actually check it out. It will be on YouTube uh, along with all the details that we're about to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, we just awesome. like to get ahead of ourselves. Sure. That's all. But but um, obviously, first new class to the Diablo universe in nearly 10 years. Um, I think there's a lot of questions in regards to like the story and so forth behind the Blood Knight. Uh, Ryan, um, why, like, give us a little bit of background regarding the, uh, the Blood Knight itself. Yeah, sure. So I, I think historically, when we released DI, we released it with these sort of six very, very familiar, very stalwart classes that all of us love that many of us have been playing for decades and it's great to kind of indulge in that nostalgia it's great to get that dopamine hit of playing a classic but after six classes it left us with the opportunity to do something that felt really new and different to do a supernatural class that's kind of monstrous okay. that does things that our other dark classes like the necromancer and the demon hunter don't do and so we're really, really stoked about the opportunity to release the Blood Knight on everybody. Nice, nice. Yeah, I know, like, I, obviously everyone's kind of seeing the Blood Knight and they're thinking, like, is this, like, vampiric <laughs> in some sort of way? Or, like, how does this, uh, how does this fit in with the, the actual lore right. um, within Diablo? Right, so the, the fine details are Blood Knights and vampires are intertwined. On Sanctuary, vampires are kind of like living plagues. They go from hunting ground to hunting ground, they kill people, they bite people, and sometimes people who they've bitten, they suffer this monstrous transformation. They start to devolve into what we call thralls, kind of like lesser vampiric beings, okay. long teeth, hunger for blood, all that stuff. And a blood knight is a person who, through means of an ancient ritual, has that curse of thraldom arrested inside them, frozen essentially in place. They get some advantages, but they get some drawbacks too. <laughs> what do you mean the curse of turning into a thrall is a drawback? <laughs> well, well their, their thraldom is essentially on pause. So basically what happens is a blood knight, also preternaturally strong and fast, can see in the dark, can smell blood from a mile away, doesn't age anymore, as you've seen in the concept art, very, very fancy. I mean, it sounds good, right? But on the flip side, you know, they... <laughs> They have these blood red eyes. They have black veins in their face. Makes right. people uncomfortable. <laughs> makes uh, people uncomfortable. And, 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 maybe, yeah, <laughs> right. and, and sort of more pivotally than that, you know, deep inside their soul, there is a, an abomination I, I of monstrous like darkness that hungers for violence. And in order to tamp that down, in order to slow their transformation further, they have to perform a ritual. That keepsake that you saw in our cinematic character's right hand, the little thing on the oh, chain. Oh, the chain, yeah. Yeah, that's basically their lifeline. I so, see. so like, like a, a link to their past? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's got a memento within of the last place that they were kind of truly human. I would love right. like a physical And so every one of this. morning, noon, and night, they're doing ablutions right? with this thing to hopefully continue to keep the darkness at bay. But, you know, it's a process. Right. The ritual, it's hearsay. You know, it's been passed down for hundreds of years. Yes. And for basically every blood night, you know, it, me too, it me too. may fail at some point. 
all blood knights are doomed to one day succumb to their curse. And they don't know if that's one day, one year, a thousand yeah, years. Could, could be centuries, right? Yeah. right? They're, they're very, very long lived. What they, what oh, they do know okay. and what they pledge on is that they're gonna use all of the time they have left to push back the darkness. Okay. And ultimately for them, since that is such an uncertain question, it's really about their, their inner sense of balance. Can I do enough good right. to make up for the evil that will rise when I'm gone. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to give a, a, a shout out because like we had the art up there earlier mm -hmm. and that art is gorgeous oh, looking. Um, at the same time, they're very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I've been joking about it. I'm like, oh, look, they're so pretty. Well, if, um, <laughs> if you were going to turn into a monster, you'd want to stop. Because they're, they're, like, they're, they're very like, they're very like gorgeous here. And then they turn into the abomination, mm -hmm. which is really funny to see. So it's like a complete like opposite. Well, yeah, but I mean, you mentioned the abomination. So I think we saw it. We saw the Blood Knight turn into this creature uh, during that. So, what is what actually is going on here? Like, this is a. I guess Chris will talk eventually about like what, how an abomination comes to me. But this is basically them tapping into the what's inside them to change form. Yeah, they're they're letting the curse off the leash just a little bit. It's going to grant them extreme power in the short term. This is a Bruce Banner but, Hulk thing. Yeah, but maybe there's a little anime teardrop there. Of like, <laughs> do I come back? From this? <laughs> Right. Okay. Got it. Awesome. Well, I, I know with the Blood Knight, um, obviously, like, it's new the class. How does it fit, Chris, into the, the the like a gameplay style? Like, what if you're playing at Blood Knight? What can you expect um, the the style to be uh, as a a person that's actually jumping into uh, Diablo? Yeah. So the Blood Knight is actually a melee hybrid class, meaning there's tons of up close combat with pole arms. However, they have a host of shadow and blood abilities they can use. To manipulate the battlefield in their favor. Um, I think the drawback of Blood Knights might be that players that start playing it might feel that their mobility is limited. However, they have tons of legendary essences to help them improve um, the ability to close the gap on enemies, um, as well as life-stealing abilities to help them sustain themselves in lengthy combat sequences. Got it. So like in, in combat more often, uh, close combat, so they're essentially taking more damage, but then they have abilities themselves to actually essentially drain, as we can see, kind of like life from others, essentially replenish their life um, uh, while they're in combat. This, the, 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 the kebab attack, as I like to call yes. it. The skewer. <laughs> the skewer attack is my favorite thing right now. I was like, so what, what's happening there? We saw it in the trailer. We see it here as well. Is where they're basically able to stab an enemy, smash it around like as if it's on the end of a hammer. Okay, okay. So that's, you're like, <laughs> Chris is like, yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> but it actually has a stun as well, right? It's not just the attack on the one thing that you skewered. It actually can, you can, it has an area effect. Yeah, so Doesn't the Blood Knight hungry, like you want stabs or pull arm forward into the closest enemy, then swings overhead the enemy and slams it into the ground, stunning everyone in a small AoE. And there are also legendary essences that let you sure. lunge forward or actually leap to perform the slam. Oh, nice. Just... Yeah, that's awesome. And then I, I know, like, of course, with every class in uh, Immortal, they all inside. have uh, different ultimates depending on their, their primary attack skills and so forth. Like, what kind of uh, two different ultimates uh, can we uh, expect for with, with the Blood Knight? Yeah, I could talk a bit about the, the primary attacks. The, the first is Ravage. Um, they're basically swinging their pole arm around in a three-hit combo. And right here is the ultimate where they become a five-hit combo with a stun at the end. And New wielding pole arms, that's... <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> and the the other what? primary attack they have is called Shadow's Edge. It's uh, quite a unique one. It's the, the first in Immortal where the um, in melee range the Blood Knight will do a slash, and for enemies that are further away they'll actually throw the dagger forward. And okay. there are legendary essences that you know add damage over time or make the dagger ricochet. Nice. So you can essentially. Uh... Uh, it's it's good room clear type of <laughs> abilities is what I'm hearing. Um, so if you got a ton of mobs in front of you, especially uh, if the daggers are ricocheting and and you mentioned piercing and so forth with the mm -hmm. ultimate and everything, you can essentially clear out whole rooms with uh, with that. So it's awesome to hear. Um, I know as you mentioned beforehand, uh, tons of uh, uh, legendary essences and everything that are associated to kind of modify skills. Um, I know, uh, and we're even seeing here, uh, this is like the abomination that we were talking yes, about beforehand. So what's, what's, why would I want to become the abomination? What do I get from that? 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about <clears throat> the abomination a bit. Um, the way it works is it is a transformative skill okay. that requires uh, the defeating enemies to fill the bar, much like your ultimate. Right. However, it happens much more often, and it then transforms your entire skill bar into um, a new primary attack, followed by two um, specific skills. It looks pretty blood badass, rush, where The Blood Knight actually dashes forward in a ball of blood, and then there's a three-hit combo attack where if um, on the last hit they fly into the air and slam the ground, stunning everyone. Oh, okay. A lot of stuns. Nice. Nice. That's awesome to see. The uh, I think the um, um, with this update that's coming out on on the thirteenth and the Blood Knight itself, and there there are like even other components and and that are kind of going to be coming with this uh, this actual update. Do you guys have any like uh, additional information on? Well, there's like, ways to play it, right? Like yeah. so the things that's really interesting. Like I've been, I mean, this is I think having a new character class introduced with on basically the anniversary of Diablo Immortal is really exciting. Like it's a great way to celebrate one year that Immortal has been. At, it's hard to believe it's already been a year. It's crazy. Um, but so having a new character, but I've been like a whirlwind barbarian for a year now uh, and loving that. And so now I'm going to obviously, well, one of the great things about Immortal is that you can class change. Like, so I can take my Paragon 500 barbarian. I know that's not high. Thank you very much. Um, I can take my Paragon 500 barbarian and turn it into a Blood Knight. Yes. Because like, there's basically yes. three ways. We have the ex- player who's been playing for a year like myself. We have the new player and we have the, the test driver, right, is the way to think about that. So maybe you can go through that. Yeah, totally. So if you're brand new to Immortal and have never played before, um, you can play the Blood Knight right out of the gate, create a new character completely free, and start with a the main story complete with um, custom Blood Knight VO lines for all of the main quests. Okay. And for players like Rod, who have been playing for a while and want to t- convert to this class, I'm happy to say that we've made some major improvements to class change. Strength and intelligence will now convert properly. A huge, re- I know, it's <laughs> a huge request that a lot of people are asking for, yes. Yes, it's going to be great. And also, um, players will be able to, during the event, change to the Blood Knight on a one day, one day cooldown and also revert back infinitely. So if you decide you don't like playing the Blood Knight, you can revert the day of. Or if you want to try it again tomorrow, you can go ahead and change back to the Blood Knight. Nice. Oh, awesome. Cool. And lastly, I want to talk about the Crimson Plane event. So. Uh, for Immortal players that are familiar with Fractured Plane, um, you, there will be a special Crimson Plane event where they'll oh, be... So for the, I mean, I think a lot maybe don't know what Fractured Plane is, so maybe just what's the five-second version of what is Fractured Plane? So Fractured Plane is basically a roguelite inside of Immortal where you're able to try out all of the skills and abilities and build towards a, a 15 levels of defeating enemies just to try out different skills. So you basically start with a fresh class, mm-hmm. and so you're taking your character, like I'm, I have a very specific build with very specific mm-hmm. gear, but if I wanted to go play Fractured Planes, it says, oh, you're a barbarian, here's some random skills, see how far you can get with this, and you build up your gear and stuff as you're playing through this roguelike experience, yeah? Exactly, exactly. And, and so now for the Blood Knight introduction, you've created Crimson Planes, which is a version of the the same experience to go and test drive all the different blood knights. I would skills. have a hard time. Exactly. With it. So you'll be able to try out different skills and legendary essences without actually committing to changing to the class. So I'm super awesome. Just try it out, see if you like <laughs> it, and if you do, there's always class change available. Ow. Nice. Nice. That's awesome to hear. So we have, um, and we have other things like I mentioned that are yeah. coming in this actual oh. update. Uh, I know that. She looks so um, good. Uh, for any n- new player that's coming in, of course, they can create a Blood Knight, how, how we mentioned beforehand, customize it, and it's completely free. Work, and then, okay. of course, any existing character can do class changes if they want, or they can create a new character if they would like to do it that way as well. Um, but I know we have, like, a new legendary gem that's going to be coming in this well, actual like, update. this is different, uh, as well. right? But I mean, more um, like and then we even have, IRL? Um, oh, my uh, Just God. other, like, you know, I, like I'm not good items at associated it. With, the, with this specific patch uh, that will be hitting as well. a full set of legendaries for the exactly. like, I freeze yeah. up and unless somebody we're going to be listing out every single legendary in the blog, yeah. that is <laughs> available for the Blood Knight in, um, in our, on if our blog immediately me, after the stream. Like, okay, so let's go. Uh, you guys can check out the <laughs> cinematic trailer that we showed like, off for so the Blood bad. Knight earlier uh, on that blog. And, of course, read all the details about what's coming in this update that is hitting on the uh, 13th of July. So soon. It's 
crazy. Um, so uh, we do. Um, we're we're super stoked. Uh, the cinematic is amazing, by the way. The I just want to like. Amazing. Why are you? Highlight. For people who didn't get a seat in full frame, right? You're basically rubbing their noses. Right now. <laughs> Essentially, I'm, uh, yeah. Like, go watch you, it again, please. See see it in in our, the Blizzard cinematic team. Amazing, amazing team. Um, that cinematic is great. Um, nothing like seeing blood splattered all over some stained glass. <laughs> so no <surprise> <laughs> so, it makes perfect sense. It's great. Um, but uh, we uh, are super stoked. So yeah, July 13th is when it's going to be coming out. And then, of course, uh, again, check DiabloImmortal.com no, 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 immediately no, no, no. after God. the stream. Uh, we'll have a blog up there for uh, people to check out. All the yeah, details. congratulations, guys, on the yep. year. It's been a, a, an amazing year for Immortal. And I think people who maybe you tried it at launch and haven't gone back to take a look at it, like the basically every quarter you would do major we do major updates and truly change the game so the ability to craft set items the ability to take your duplicate legendaries and turn that into a currency so that you can make your current legend you know stronger and and the way that you do dungeons now like at, and the the tower the clan play like there's just so much else going on so it's a free to play game if you want to go check it out just to see all the changes like, like i said there's been in a year it's it's complete to me it's a completely different game in the sense of the different ways that you can approach the the content, which is exciting. But uh, hearing the the fact that you fully recorded all VO for the Blood Knight for the campaign, uh, I think it'll be exciting to go back and start over. Yeah, it's about two thousand lines in total. Ooh. We've got a pair of really really awesome voice actors, uh, Abby Trot and Ben Prendergast. Absolutely killed it as the Blood Knight. It's just pure haughtiness and <laughs> bloodlust <laughs> and action. That, that, that all the way They've got some interesting takes on. Uh, I was going to say the name of the villain, our Act 3 villain <laughs> in Dark Wood. Some interesting perspectives there. But yeah, I, I don't think there's ever really been a better time to re-roll to start a new run through the main story. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much, and congratulations. Thanks yeah, so much, Ron. We're stoked. And we're going to be uh, now switching over to D4 content. We're actually going to take like a really short break because we've got to swap people in. This room is only so big. And uh, wow, we also need again. mics off of people and everything. But uh, we're going to be uh, swapping in uh, um, uh, into our Diablo 4 segment, so we'll see you here in a, a minute or so. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's go! That, they're, they're really good at that, that extra teasing, eh? This is still one of my favorite scenes in the game. Wait, don't you like melty feet?
And we're back. <laughs> what happened that, to the awkward hello? Intro. You're supposed that's to go, gonna, hello. That's going to be my intro I'm for everything. I'm technically not back. I, or I, 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 I'm wait. Well, you I, are I, technically back. I mean, you I were mean, in other I'm, streams and other times. Correct. I'm not yeah. back. I'm, I'm new. Oh, yeah. That's that's true. True. Tim is new. Tim also has the best voice oh, in the world. Yeah? Oh, okay, okay. Um, so <laughs> Tim, Tim is just going to talk for the rest of the stream. I didn't prepare for that at all. Surprise. Maybe you should actually introduce people? Yes, or? I will introduce people. Uh, we are now joined by our wonderful Diablo 4 developers. Uh, we have Tim Ismay. May I introduce you? Hello, uh, Tim Ismay. I'm a, one of the lead producers on Diablo 4, specifically focused on seasons. I say that because if you ask me questions outside of the seasons <laughs> context, I have no idea what's going on. And you said plural. <laughs> you said Wait, plural. there's more than one season. I, I more, more than, than one, one season. season. Yeah. There is even more than one season. That's, uh, that's going to be, we're reviewing or, that. Or, or that's job security. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually just asking for that. Yeah. Right, yeah. Wait, we're supposed to be thinking about job security? <laughs> Damn it. And we have oh, a yeah. familiar face. Joey yeah, P. So, uh, yes. Uh, Tim is great. Cora. I'm the associate game director for the live service. And I'm excited to talk about season one today at last. Uh, but first. But first. Oh, but first. <laughs> That's right. Because Adam has built everything possible to talk about, start, except the season. Oh, right. yeah. You can never start talking about seasons <laughs> until we talk about something else first. But, but there are cool things to actually talk about. Correct. Correct. Uh, we, you know, obviously it's been a little over a month since Diablo 4 has launched. It's True. only been a month. Is it well? Yeah. If you include no, like no, early no, access. but you're right. It is yeah. like it, I, I always yeah. the amount of feedback we get about like, hey, this thing, and you're like, it's been like five weeks. Like, exactly. hey, give us a second. Exactly. So um, it, it, it has been uh, a month, a little bit more than a month yeah. uh, since Diablo Four has. Yeah. Actually How did you guys get a? Yeah, because I mean, we don't count weeks. beta, right? Oh, we Official got, release. We, we started it well before the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Yeah. 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 We're extremely good at our job. Wait, so you started before the game launch? I don't want to get the weeds, everybody. <laughs> but like we did start before the game launched to make sure that we could actually. Release I thought you were just gonna say zombies are really easy to make, and so therefore it was. It, yeah, oh my god. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Also, people are saying that your mic is low, Mr. Joey P. My, oh, no. my mic yeah. is low. So I don't okay. know if I'll, we, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. I promise. Live, live broadcast, everyone. Live I can broadcast. I can project everybody. Yeah, That's what's can, gonna take. He can start screaming. <laughs> just scream, everybody. And you haven't seen so Joey P. Scream. So you, so yeah. you're talking sorry, about sorry. the five weeks. <laughs> I was just shocked by the five week thing. But anyway, Correct. so yes, it's been uh, so five weeks. obviously it's been five weeks since we launched. We've had uh, numerous updates to the game, hot fixes, patches. We actually had a campfire chat in between, uh, where we talked about um, even um, a, a big update that was coming before 13 season one. Page yes, thirteen patches. page. Which people are like, well, that must have been like fourteen point font, <laughs> double spaced. And I'm like, maybe it was, <laughs> but it still was very big. It was like eleven pages, and it went on on the actual site, but. Uh, we, you know, we've, we've addressed a lot of feedback and everything um, uh, related to the game. Uh, we still have more feedback yeah, that we're actually going to be addressing. All of and it. I oh will say God. that uh, later Which this afternoon, on, there is going to be another patch, climb patch, <laughs> surprise, spoilers, <laughs> or announcement. Uh, the, uh, we will have patch 104. That's going to be hitting all platforms later this afternoon. There will be p uh, patch notes uh, posted this afternoon. Not as, very much not as chonky as, as 103, but it does address additional um, uh, feedback and, and issues that people have been reporting over to us okay. uh, you got, you uh, in got the actual one? patch notes. Um, Come on, I, put you I, spot. I, funny enough, I actually, do I actually have this printed out? I don't think you can say that 1.04 is coming this afternoon and not give an example I mean, of something we're fixing. <laughs> yeah. um, I know that they are actually uh, doing a gameplay fix in regards to, or a gameplay adjustment to um, Helltide Chess, uh, so that Helltide Chess will now actually drop unique items. Oh, finally. Yeah. Have the chance to drop unique items, but yes. yes. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Have the chance. <laughs> not like a guarantee. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now that's Whoa. quoted, and I'm just like, yeah. Finally. So yeah. that's... that's Okay, that sounds stupid for me as the GM to go like, I didn't even, I thought they already could drop uniques with Helltide Chess, so I was, I, I was mistaken there. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, so there are some content types that the, the rewards are not, um, not dropping like unique items from it, so like, you know, like Whisper, Bounty Caches, for example, don't have a chance to drop unique items when you turn in for those. Didn't know that either. Yeah, Random but I, I think like there's, the uh, there's opportunities stuff. for us to continue to like try to expose this more as we talk about these things moving forward. Uh, but yeah, this is an opportunity now. We want to make sure that when players are trying to target farm for certain kinds of uniques for their builds they need to grab in order to bring those things online, that those whisper caches really can be used as a way to, uh, to or not whisper caches, the uh, tortured gifts you can get from the, uh, the Helltides uh, events. Those are really good opportunities to go and try to uh, go for those. And that's this afternoon. So once 104 yep. goes out, once your uniques can drop in. That's Helltide right. Chest. That's right. That's this afternoon. 
Yep. Today, and I, I will yes. say, like, we've been getting, uh, like we've mentioned, I think, many times already in this stream, we have been getting a lot of feedback. Uh, a lot of feedback related to um, bugs, issues, or even just, like, general gameplay feedback. More and it's something farms. that the team has been Let's reading go. through and getting through. Um, and those are things that, you know, obviously, we'll, you, we're, we're addressing as we get through all these different updates yeah. uh, in the future and everything. Um, uh, and building the big backlog. Like, this is the thing. I, I was making the joke about they started before, like, seasons started before the, yeah. we launched just to try to set expectations like we're trying we're moving as fast as we can but we have to move also safely because if we move too fast we can kind of vibrate the game out of stability and so we're trying to be as reactive as we can um, but in a safe way and knowing we have a large backlog of season one was already well in flight and and season two is also very much well in flight um, and so we're trying to make those adjustments so we hear the feedback so please don't take the lack of instantaneous responses and we don't hear you. We hear you, we hear about, I wanna lock my inventory. We hear you about all the different types of things that you're giving us feedback on and we appreciate Super that mouse. feedback. Let's go. And we're doing our best to address <laughs> it as quickly and as safely as possible. So um, so just trying to manage expectations that um, sometimes it might feel, but again, it's only been five weeks. We've. Uh, this is a game that we are going to, you know, we're going to support for years to come. This is a foundation of, you know, we, we said the launch was the beginning, not the end. Sorry. And so we're going to be continuing to support this game through many seasons and through expansions and what have you. And so please uh, just allow yes. us some time to, to catch up and work through our backlog to get to those items that we know that you care about. And I, I do want to note that we're, you know, as we were in preseason, we were obviously shooting out a lot of updates really quickly and this is something we talked about a little bit on the campfire chat but we are going to get into a more systematic way of being able to update the game so it's not just going to be like <laughs> ad hoc hey guys what a new client sure. patch type of thing unless there's an emergency but uh but yeah it's it we, we people start to find a more uh some familiarity with how we actually update the game around seasons and 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 client patches that may occur whether they are in between or only on seasons and so forth so okay. we'll have that actually communicated out and people then know what to expect going forward uh when we do have uh different updates or different different patches that actually yeah the it's, i think it's really important that we have now to talked about things we did in the preseason. Uh, we have, we've made a number of changes on the balance side. We've, made, we've responded to a lot of player feedback. We've got 1.04 coming out later on this afternoon. But Adam, what do the people want to hear about? <laughs> they we, uh, we, we talk about season one. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually now going to talk about. No, <laughs> but uh, uh, we do want to talk about season one. Uh, okay. Season one is coming, and we it's, actually have a really uh, cool uh, trailer to show off before. <laughs> Uh, we jump into it, so hit it, Rich and Matt. Oh, let's go. I am writing to you because although a great evil is receding from Sanctuary, a new festering curse now spreads its corruption across the land. More dangerous, more malignant than I could have imagined. I have found a way to stop this plague. To rip the dark power of these monsters from their very core and turn it to our advantage in destroying them. No! <laughs> but I cannot do this alone. My allies have fallen. My strength is dwindling. The malignant are relentless and without mercy. I need help. I need you. Season of the building. God, it sounds so nice. Tentacles, Cthulhu confirmed. Yes. 7.20. Okay, okay, okay. And there we have it. The first season of Diablo 4 coming out on July 20th. Uh, the season of the malignant. The 20th, okay. Lots to talk about there. Lots to talk right. about there. Two so weeks. we're actually going to jump into it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, obviously, a lot of people want to know what's going on. And we have you time know, for we've two even weeks teased of it on, on social media yesterday where uh, um, something was, was corrupting Sanctuary. Um, I guess Tim, Joe? Like, yeah, no, okay. So what's, what's going on? That's also true. So, season one, the season of the malignant. So, uh, so our very, very first season in the game is going to basically uh, take place in, after the events of Diablo 4. 
So after the, you know, the redacted and the redacted have happened and the player has finished redacting the redacted, uh, once all that's out of the that's way, uh, that's when things redacted. are really going to kick off in the world of Sanctuary, kind of step off from that point. <laughs> Uh, and there is a new threat that's basically emerged in Sanctuary. There's this, uh, there's this malignance, there's this corruption that's begun to spread uh, throughout like the hearts the of the creatures oh throughout the world. And that's that's everything from like beasts to, uh, to, to, to humans, uh, to demons themselves. Uh, everything in between uh, can be corrupted by this malignance that's beginning to take root and fester inside, the, uh, the, uh, inside people. And it's basically what? kind of like it's, 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 um, it's changing them. Right, it's, it's turning into these like these bloodthirsty fiends. Effectively, they're going out and trying to destroy everything. And it's threatening sanctuary at a very, very, uh, it very high level. It always gets me. I'm not used to having alert uh, sounds. Players are going to come so. across a new character that they're going to introduce to over the course of the season, uh, named Cormand, who we actually uh, saw in the trailer there. Okay. Uh, okay. Cormand is yeah, there he is. Cormand. Uh, Cormand is a uh, an ex uh, member of the Cathedral of Light. And he used to be a priest of the Cathedral of Light. Okay. Uh, and he's taken it upon himself to start trying to dive deeper into this new malignant threat that's risen uh, over the course of these, uh, the, these days following the, uh, the events of Diablo IV's main campaign. Uh, but he's finding himself maybe a little out of his depth. Did you say, Tim? Like, what do you, what do you think about Corman? Yeah, he's trying to fix the problem on his own, and then I know, he's right? not 100% <laughs> successful. He comes to the player and says, hey, you were really helpful in the past. Could I get a hand from you? So that's kind of where things start. Yeah, he's very, uh, I, I think that uh, you'll find, like, he's a person, everything in the room is on fire, but he's sitting there like, I can fix it. You know, I, I can, we can, we can find a way to solve this, right? Duct tape. Uh, but he's a, he's a great new character that the player get introduced over the course of the season. But that's really just where things kick off. Now, and, and players will start the season of uh, Malignant actually in Kyobashad. And they're going to gain access to like that, like the, the beginning of the story okay. of the season, pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're able to start off right at level one, That's true. like jumping out of the uh, out of the gate, and be able to start like following the thread of this new season storyline. And we're going to talk about the transition from the current Eternal Realm into the season afterwards. Once we're going to get through the season information first. Yeah, then yeah, we'll, yeah. Well, then when I know people are really curious about what happens to my current character, how do yeah. I think about that transition? Well, but we'll get to that after we get through the season details. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So that's the so that's the kind of the, the high level like what is what's happening in the that's world. That's the theme, right? That's the, that's so the we theme, have a yeah. seasonal theme with a seasonal story, but okay. like what what about the mechanic? There's usually, on top of the theme, there's usually the seasonal mechanics. So what's the mechanics that we're yeah. looking at? We, we're trying to add more stuff to seasons that uh, appeal to everything that a player does in Diablo Four. So we are adding story, the elements of what you're going to find out about what is actually happening to Sanctuary, but then we want things that are new challenges for the player, things that you can fight that maybe you haven't fought before, uh, as well as new powers, things that you can build your character in a different way, uh, a different direction than maybe you did in any previous season, or in this case in the, uh, the preseason when you had just the Eternal Realm. So hitting all of those notes, we're starting with a mechanic around the threat. So what is the threat? The Malignant. We've been talking about it a lot. Where does the Malignant actually uh, show up? That actually shows up throughout the entire game. Yep. When you're playing in the world of Sanctuary, anytime you encounter any elite monster, there's a chance that it will spawn as a malignant version of that monster. So that malignant version is going to have these growths on it and some additional power. After you kill it, a heart will actually appear, the exposed malignant heart that was causing this. If you then interact with that heart by using a cage of binding, it now starts a ritual where it's pulling all the malignants in and a new, even more powerful version of that elite oh, okay. is spawned. Yep. Why would you want this? How does this help you? <laughs> well, if you can manage to beat that even more powerful version where you see these other minions are now helping it, these other malignant creatures, now it drops the caged heart. You've actually put all that malignant power into this cage that is an item Uber that you butcher. can use that is kind of like a gem. In the, it's like a gem in the sense that you can socket it into gear. It is very much not like a gem in the sense that it has an enormous amount of power. Okay. Uh, think of a legendary item, the kind of power that's in there. It's like that, maybe even a little bit more than that. So you can take these malignant hearts, you can socket them into your jewelry, and that gives you these kind of stupid new broken builds <laughs> that are hopefully balanced, uh, hopefully, but I, they are extremely powerful. So these are new options of how you can play I the like game. It. Yeah, so the, this is really, really cool, right? So the, one of the things we really want to do with each season, to Tim's point, is we want to make sure that we're providing new ways for players to engage with Diablo 4, new problems for them to solve, new ways for them to customize their characters and kind of do new cool stuff. Right. And that's what Malignant Hearts and the powers associated with Malignant Hearts really allow us to do.
So mm. one of these things, so yes, you can take a malignant heart that you've managed to collect from one of the consumed that you managed to kill, uh, one of these, these super malignant creatures that you've, uh, you've, you've killed this way, and you can socket them into your gear. We have over 30, we have 32 new, I'm not going to say like over 30, we have 32 <laughs> new malignant powers. You know exactly how <laughs> yeah. many powers. Technically, yeah. Exactly, yeah, no, it's, it's 32. So we have 32, we have 32 new, new malignant ones. powers are going out this way. These are, these are our new legendary power-like abilities. You can see this one here, critical strikes, electrically charged uh, like, uh, creatures at, for a uh, certain amount of damage. Um, so these are, these are like, there's a lot of really powerful things like this uh, that you'll be able to kind of like interact with over the course of time. But each of the malignant hearts you're collecting are actually like a category. They're associated okay. with a color. So if like, you know, brutal hearts, for example, or like have a, have a blue color to them. Mm. And they'll only go in infested sockets on, you'll find on rings and jewelry during the season of the malignant of a matching color. I see. So when you're hunting for like, when you're like finding new amulets and rings or gambling at the, uh, at the, at the, like the Opal's vendor, whatever you want to do, you're kind of <laughs> looking for specific socket colors. Or if you're getting a unique ring from the new the health hide chest rewards as you're playing from the <laughs> one. That's right. If, you're, if you happen to luck out and get Mother's Embrace because you need another Mother's Embrace, then like, yes, you can absolutely. One <laughs> will never do. Yeah, but yeah. but the, what's interesting, like with the, so there's three different types of color sockets, yes? There's three different kinds of types of colored sockets, but there's four different types of malignant hearts. Yes. Go on. Well, well okay, I guess I will. Uh, so the, uh, the last malignant heart type is called, uh, like, basically a raffle. It's an like extremely powerful uh, malignant heart type. Uh, they're very, very rare uh, to find, <laughs> but they will fit in any colored socket uh, as you go. Okay. Um, and you kind of want a combination of all of these. So even though the, the, uh, the Wrath Falls are pretty strong, you're really only looking to probably have like one or two of these based on what you might actually need for your build you know, uh, over the course of the time. House. So it's, it's fun, like, the, uh, like really want to be able to experiment with, again, creating these different problems for players to solve, different ways for players to engage with things and really change up that experience uh, by virtue of adding these new powers. They're going to unlock different builds potentially for classes, to Tim's point, and just basically be like a really fun, exciting new way for players to kind of uh, inject new power into the experience. But you're looking for the so can the jeweler when the jeweler right now can add a socket to mm -hmm. uh, you know a piece of jewelry can, yeah. are they able to add colored sockets or are those only so you found? can't choose the color but anytime a ring would ro roll with a socket uh, from, uh, when the season of malignant starts uh, it's always going to have a color associated with it there's not yes. like you couldn't get like just a regular jewel uh, but socket even, but even a jeweler created one like if yes. I have a ring yeah. with no socket when I do the jeweler it'll be colored it'll yes. always be colored yeah. Yeah. So it'll always be an infested yeah. socket in this way Got it. yeah oh, okay. and, but that's true for unique so if I'm looking for uh, a unique I have a unique ring like you talked about sure. but I want the blue version mm -hmm. I could find a unique with the red socket and I could find it with a yellow socket so right. I'm looking for a blue so there'll yeah, be, might be multiple versions of the uniques as well right mm -hmm. that's correct oh, okay. yeah cool, cool. so yeah fun fun new stuff to look forward to and that's just I mean that's we showed in the video earlier like <laughs> the, the player fighting a malignant creature you know uh, there's a chance for as, as Tim pointed out like there's a chance for all kinds of elites out there in the world to be malignant in nature right. which makes them a little bit more powerful but then when you kill them and you go and you actually use the cage of binding to, to capture their heart uh, then you fight that super consumed uh, that the consumed version it's like that's going to be like buffing nearby monsters it spawns a bigger a bigger a uh, bigger like a uh, combat and we said we wanted more um, things there's, for there's unique, more to look forward to those get tougher and tougher and you want to fight higher and higher level versions of those in higher world tiers to get even better versions of those hearts. Yeah, so you, you can get stronger versions of the hearts as you get it further into the game. And you might be thinking, like, okay, th does that mean, like, the old, like, the, the crappy hearts that I got earlier? Are those useless? <laughs> you can actually break those down at the yeah. crafter as well to get a crafting material out of them that allows you to craft new items, including invokers. Yeah. So invokers. invokers are something that you can use a little bit further on once you finish the campaign uh, of Season 1 you will unlock the ability to go and use these at a specific place oh, yeah, of course, called of course. a malignant tunnel. So if you are the way, trying to... That's also the name of my colonoscopy. The mal okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, dear God. And, uh, it's a serious thing when you're over 50. This is, you should and know this. That's actually and this a good point. Is a good point. So if you have a malignant tunnel, you should get yourself checked out. Uh, so <laughs> in, in the world of sanctuary, when we say malignant tunnel, uh, we mean, hey, I'm a player and I want to—I actually want to get more of these hearts, but it's just a random chance on elites out in the world. Where can I intentionally find more of them? There are these malignant tunnels. So there are actually places across the world where the malignance is manifesting in these new dungeons. So if you specifically want to go find more malignant hearts, you can hunt down these tunnels. Yep. Okay. You can go in and, hey, there are more malignant there. So there's a higher chance of finding malignant monsters there. And if you want to guarantee it, man, I really need a very specific type of malignant heart. How do I make that even more likely? That's when you take your crafted invoker, you go all the way to the end of a malignant tunnel, and you can use it on a malignant outgrowth. When you use it on that outgrowth, it now spawns that specific type of malignant 
that's going to have the color associated with it of the heart you're trying to find. You kill that, and you're going to get the specific heart. So there's a, a little bit more targeted farming you can do as you approach the end game of, uh, <laughs> right. of season one. Actually, I have like, if you go to the C video, it will be able to show you the going into the an evoker event where you can go in and sort of which I've heard called the turkey baster from hell, basically, is what an invoker looks like. It does kind of, yes. I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't the, like, art direction on it, but yeah, that's where we ended up. So, yeah, at the end of these bullet-in tunnels, uh, you're going to find that there are these, uh, these, kind of these, these masses of malignants that you're going to be able to go and interact with. Okay. And each of the that's tunnels the has a few different ones uh, that can potentially spawn different colors of malignant uh, outgrowths that can spawn from those. Yes. So it gives you those opportunities to go and, like, really target farm, as Tim's point, uh, pointed out, like, certain kinds of malignant and hearts okay, okay. Uh, as the player's progressing through the experience. Okay, okay, here. Yeah. Come so here, let me show you, like, you were just showing it. Come here, over here. You what? Right here. Yeah, Polish. show the one you were just showing, because that was okay. the, the invoker event. So basically, there's a growth. You get there to the end go. of the tunnel. Yeah. There's a, you were able to set basically, essentially you're requesting a monster of a particular color, yes? You're saying, like, I want a blue heart. Mm -hmm. A chance to get a blue heart by trying to defeat the blue monster. Yes, that's right. And some of these, are, like particularly later on in the experience, like the most powerful hearts you get are going to be uh, uh, delivered from things like these invoker encounters okay. that you go and interact with. So yeah, something so, we're very excited about. So basically, they use an invoker on this, the one of the pods. That's right. Yes. Yeah, the outgrowths from this malignant mass, which then, yeah. which then creates a blue monster for you to go fight. Mm -hmm. and you have to take that down, which will then. So does this one go through the same mechanic where I, I have to kill it, try to capture heart to kill yeah, the heart thing? You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, when, you, when this thing pops up, after you kill this one, you don't actually have to capture it. You're fighting the, 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 the power of it like, immediately. That's no. what I was asking. Yeah, yeah, so you don't yeah. have to do the one two. Right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. Got it. So that's nice. So it's kind of a little like the sigil crafting when you basically, oh, I've got a bunch of stuff I'm not using right now. I can craft it down so that I exactly. can focus what malignant hearts I want. Because maybe my build, I know I want a brutal heart, but I haven't running into Makes any sense. blue malignants out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So now I can go into a malignant tunnel, fight my way to the end, have an opportunity to use the invoker to create a blue malignant to go after its heart. Yeah? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Rogers called it all. And I know. <laughs> that's all I'm here to do is summarize. Well, that's good. He's if like, I, I will take everything you said, <laughs> summarize it into two sentences. Like, um, and I know, like, obviously, with the the story and so forth, there are like new, like a, a new boss and so forth associated with it. Yeah, there's new, but we're it. not really talking about that. We're not that we're yeah, 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 there's yeah, there's new, there's new boss monsters you know, for players to fight the course season. Uh, there are <laughs> you know, new legendary items for players to collect this season. Correct. Uh, there's yes. new, you, there's our legendary powers, I should say, for players yes. to collect. There's new unique items for players to collect. Now, those new unique legendaries and uh, the unique, the <laughs> unique uniques. <laughs> the unique that. Um, those are not just in the seasonal realm, though, right? Are those things that are also showing up in the eternal? That's realm? right. Those will also show up in the eternal realm. So exactly. yeah, if you're if you're a player who's like really trying to continue to progress your character in the eternal realm, there are there's now a few new items for you to go try to hunt for and use to kind of augment and change your build. This is the moment where I, I can do the pr the producer. Thing. The, okay, oh, okay, yeah. So oh, the, yeah. the pat, you probably yeah. saw before on that the screen when we looked at the cinematic it was awesome. And, and we said July twentieth. Oh my God, there it is. The, the day it's coming out. We are actually putting out the patch a little bit earlier. So just for awareness, so everyone knows you're going to see your game patching on July eighteenth. That is all of the stuff coming okay. to you that is going to turn on on July yeah, 20th. Balance oh, changes, okay, the, the new items. Okay. Yeah. 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 So July 18th is actually anything that shows up on the Eternal Realm is there right away. If you just want to continue playing the game as normal on your existing characters or a new Eternal character if you want, okay. July 18th, the new Legendaries and Uniques that they were just talking about will be available to you on the Eternal Realm as well as any other improvements, balance changes, rewards changes that we've made, those will be there right away on July 18th. Okay. July 20th, the season turns on, you can now create seasonal characters. Oh, okay, cool. The thing is, like, going back to managing expectations, I think one of the things we've been trying to be really clear about with seasons is that it is not a continuation of the camp main campaign storyline. Like, we've been using, trying to use phrases like, uh, it's a new quest line, uh, working with Corman to <clears throat> solve the malignant is a big, you know, is obviously the, the journey you're on, but it's not about the Anarius Lilith journey, it's not extending that story. It's sort of a side okay. story inside the open world. Is yeah, it just takes yeah. place after the events of Diablo 4, but you're absolutely right. You know, this is a new self-contained <laughs> story uh, within the season, season of the malignant, which is great because it just gives us a lot of, like, it forces a lot of opportunities to tell an exciting story and to create like these, these new big features that kind of go along with that and support it. So as I'm playing through that now, it yep. would be amazing if there was some way to sort of track my accomplishments through the season. I don't know, maybe some sort of 
journey, perhaps, yeah, so you would want be track, really... You want to track your seasonal journey through some kind of <laughs> feature. Is that, I don't know if I could tee that up any higher for you. We went from golf to t-ball. Yeah, we went from golf ball. to t-ball really yeah, fast, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So there is, it, this is our, obviously with season one, where we're going to bring out the season journey feature, which I know we've talked a little bit about on stream before, but I guess it's worth maybe calling out and with maybe a little bit more clarity. Hey, look, it's, it's, it's this, but without redacted all over it now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So this is, yeah so no this top is, secret. Yeah, so this is the, this is the battle pass re uh, introducing as part of season one, and then going into here, you'll see the season journey. Uh, and again, so the season journey is separated into seven chapters. You know, and uh, like these, these major chapters, and each of those chapters has a number of objectives inside uh, each of them to, in order to allow you to progress that chapter. And you don't have to do all of them? You don't have to do all of them. You have to do a subset of them in order to advance to the, to the next chapter. Uh, so well, I think it's really cool. So like objective to objective, you're going to be earning uh, favor drops, which can be used to fuel your battle pass, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Yeah. But you're also, for your chapter completion moments, you're getting big drops of that favor that's going to be used like an experience point value for your battle pass. But you're also going to be getting some like item rewards, and importantly, you're going to be unlocking new legendary aspects, Ooh. ones that you can't normally get through the Codex of Power, through like dungeon completion. Well, and also, use, many like, of our new of concept, legendary right? aspects we're adding in the season, if you're playing in the seasonal realm, you can collect that for your Codex of Power by going to the season journey. So it's a great way for you to introduce yourself to some of these new things as you're kind of playing through. New yeah, I've loved this. Like one of the things that's hard about for people who know Diablo three and its sort of journey. Hold on, wait, wait. Do you love this? I love this. Oh, that actually feels really good. To <laughs> I love this. Uh, the notion around like I'm, I like the fact that the subset aspect of it because I know there are certain things. I'll pick a stupid example. It's like maybe I hate sellers for some reason. I'm a seller mm -hmm. hater, mm -hmm. and so I never want to complete a seller. Then the fact that I can advance chapter one to go to chapter two without ever doing what lurks below, um, it, I think that's great because that's like I find you get into situations. I have other games where they're like, you must do this thing that you really don't want to do in order to progress. And the fact that I don't have to do that here, that I can choose a subset of things to continue my progress, I think is really smart. It yeah, is nice. I, I, yeah. I think it's it's really good to hear. It's one of the things we really want to do is make sure that like ex like the base example of this is like we really like. Uh, letting players use our fields of hatred as opportunities to kind of like progress their characters sure. instead of a season, but we don't, and we want to include that which in is the PvP journey, fields, the, yeah. mm -hmm. which is the PvP content in the game. Okay. Uh, but we don't want to make that like a requirement that you must go do this content in sure. order to progress your season journey. We want to give players the option to do this if they choose. One so, thing I, I do want to call out here as well uh, with the season journey, and I think you're going to call it out in some other places, is that uh, it can be confusing to players initially that you, you go to this battle pass screen, you click on the season journey button. Do, you, do I have to buy the battle pass to get this? No. Everyone has access to the season journey. This is a base feature that everybody is engaging with. Actually, everybody has access to the battle pass, too. You're engaging with Even if you never pay a cent, you are engaging with the battle pass. You're getting in free stuff. In the seasonal realm. In the in seasonal realm. realm. Yes, and the Right, I'm always reminding you, like, you. In the seasonal realm, this stuff exists. There is no season journey if you're not in the season. That's very important. It only exists there. There is no battle pass if you're not in the season. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So yeah, that's the that's the essentially the way the season journey works. Uh, the those final objectives, those final chapters are really really tough to complete. You can get some like special like cosmetics, like spe like special like title and things. The uh, towards the end of that uh, uh, that that path. So right. we're excited to play, see players like engage with it and for us to continue to support it in future seasons. And so the, we saw that the season journey grants you a lot of favor to go yeah. towards your battle pass, but you also earn favor just out in the world killing stuff. And that's right. Anything that's uh, like killing monsters, completing like, like whispers and dungeons and things like all of these things will be earning you favor as you, uh, as you kind of play through the season. Right. So anything that's getting you experience points is a chance to give you that, uh, that favor as well. So if, if, you, if you have never played the campaign yet, like you're about to buy the game for the first time with the season, for example, right. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to roll a seasonal character, I'm going to play the campaign. The fact that while I'm playing the campaign, I'm killing stuff, and I'm still earning favor. Like this stuff is still sort of progressing in the background, right? In That's terms absolutely of, correct. I just won't run into any. I won't run into any malignant until I finish the campaign. That's so. absolutely right. But you will, as yeah, you play so through, make a new character to your point rod on the season of the realm. You're playing through the campaign. Just for you will be that earning don't know. favor as you're killing monsters and doing things during the campaign. Uh, but a lot of those, and you can also progress your season journey, but some of those objectives might require you to go and interact with season features that aren't available until after you finish the events of the Diablo 4 main campaign. And that's probably one of the yeah. big things to be clear about. I, mean, uh, I know we're going to talk about the transition later, but yeah. in terms of um, getting access to the mechanic, the idea of run, talking to Corman, capturing malignant hearts, having rings with colored sockets or jewelry with colored sockets, that stuff all takes place 
post campaign. That's correct. And so if you haven't beat the campaign yet, you're not going to run into these seasonal yeah, mechanics. Me mm -hmm. that, right. Yeah, you won't fight more than creatures, for example, very, going very the, uh, the, uh, the campaign right. on the so, yeah. seasonal realm, but you will shortly thereafter. So one of the things you can do, and I know we're going to talk about this, and we keep saying we're going to talk about this, right. and then we talk about it anyway. But like, <laughs> so, uh, so I would say, like, you know, one of the things you can do to get ready for the season is to make sure you finish your, your campaign playthrough. Um, Diablo 4, yes. jump in. You can choose to skip a campaign when you make your new seasonal character right. and dive right into the seasonal uh, story and content immediately. And, and that's forevermore. That's one thing we've tried to say is that once you complete the campaign on one character on your yeah, account, one character, one for time. every season moving forward, for any character you create moving forward, you can skip campaign and start off in Kyobushad level one off you. Well, and you know, not, not always Kyobushad, but yes. <laughs> Is that so foreshadowing? You know, it took us a we got to Well, we should, get to, we, the, we, we, we should get to the battle pass. So the favor, so you have favor flowing because you're playing the game. Because you're playing the game because you're doing your season journey objectives, you're and, getting even and more And I was going to say, you're getting yeah. more, and the favor is really flowing because I'm completing the season journey objectives. And yep. so that favor is feeding into your progress on the battle pass, whether you've cho chosen to just have the free battle pass or whether you've chosen to upgrade it to a premium battle pass, correct? That's absolutely correct. So what, can we go back to the screen? Because I think it's one of the things... What we highlight here is part of the thing is kind of a, you know, we use the term, why would I want to complete the battle pass? One of the reasons you would want to complete the battle pass is you could look like this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and by completing the battle pass in terms of the mount, the mount armor, the yeah. armor that the characters are wearing. Um, and so, Whoa. did you want to talk a little bit about what yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, so the, so the, one, of the, one of the things that's really cool about a lot of the items in the battle pass uh, there are these these really exciting like armors to chase for the characters. Uh, there are like fun new emotes to go uh, chase for for different classes, and we have even things like the uh, like like what we're showing off here, like the artisan's tunic. We have some things that are like uh, like these. And this is actually one of our our free cosmetics. Actually, is this the things are like a little bit lower fantasy that we can use to kind of like role play different kind of themes out for your characters, oh just God, give you like more this. options. And we have like our bigger stuff like this. Like, like this is like the uh, like the awoken cold iron stuff is like some of like the like real chase armor uh, cosmetics that exist. The end of the uh, end of the battle pass. It's one of the things that, like, when it, if you notice the either the role playing armor, like the artisan uh, tunic nice. or the 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 helmet, is that one of the big things about the battle pass is that unlike the shop, the battle pass, all of the cosmetics are class agnostic. So why we have a preview for all five classes, so you can see what it looks like on a barbarian, what it looks like on a druid, oh, what it looks cool. like on a necromancer, and those sorts of things. And that's one of the nice things about the battle pass is everything you're earning on the battle pass, yeah. class agnostic. Yeah, yeah. For those class for those for those the, transmogs. The the exception is the transmog weapons. There are transmog weapons on there that are class specific, just because classes, classes only can, can equip only use certain specific, weapons. Yeah. So if your class can equip that weapon, then you have access to it. The just to reinforce, I think it was already expressed, but there yeah. are lots of free things on the battle pass. If you pay to upgrade it to the premium battle pass, what you're gaining access to are a bunch of additional cosmetic things. Yeah. So what, the only thing you're gaining access to by paying is that additional cosmetic unlock. So there's really, really cool stuff, some on the early end, and then especially on the tail end of it, that that's what you're buying into. But the free version... I'm, keep going. I'm getting ready to transition. Okay. The free version... I know where I want to go. Still has yeah. some very cool it's unlocks. It's smart how they did And that. anything related to... Well, you wanted to talk more about blessings, right? Well, that's what they're saying with, with the free side. Like, So we were saying okay. there's 27 free yeah. tiers in the yeah. Battle Pass. And part of those 27 free tiers are uh, smoldering ashes that you can get based on the level yes. you are in the game yep. and that you yeah. progress with favor. And what do those smoldering ashes get you? So these smoldering ashes the player will collect through the battle pass are, as you called out, like they're, they're on the free track of the battle pass. You need to be, you have, you have a character of a certain level in order to be able to actually use them. So they're kind of like, you know, they're rate limited that way. Uh, we'll take those and you'll be able to use those and apply them to the seasonal blessings. Uh, system. Right. And here, ah, okay, we can actually finally reveal all of these. So here are the places where as the player is collecting these, uh, these ashes, they can invest them here to give all of their characters on the seasonal realm uh, kind of like this, this, uh, this advantage to really carry through. Mm -hmm. So whether that is like, you know, bonus to like XP earned from monster kills, like we call out here, or things like boosting the duration of all elixirs that you're, uh, that you're using over the course of the season. Right, and you can, looks like, I'm assuming, that, I don't know if it's linear or not, but if I would assume it was linear, I can do it four times at 15%, so like 60% duration on elixirs, you know, in terms of that particular, the earner per Character level 40 That's right. or four, yeah. that's actually you not want bad. It just be an extra little fun little thing for players to change it's not hard to get to level the season 40. to kind of, you know, help them like uh, boost their characters up a little bit more quickly as they kind of get deeper and deeper into progression to the season and give them a cool, uh, few different advantages to play with so, while they're playing through. So if I were to max out with my Smoldering Ashes, they're like a... Earn a prolonging is where I want to invest my smoldering ashes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I can basically take my 30-minute elixir and make it 
almost a 50 minute elixir. Yeah. So yeah. getting that 5% yeah. XP boost, maybe for me it's the extra 200 thorns and that mm -hmm. 200 armor. Um, Okay, that that's really cool. Yeah, and, and give you boosts like get more opportunities to earn like the uh, or better melee at heart drops that can occur for you as you're playing. Yeah, the and these are available to everyone to be because, yes. who's yeah. in the seasonal the realm because it's part of the free track. Yes, uh, and they are limited at based on. PM, um, right? They're also limited based on the level of the player, right? so that even if someone were to use uh, tier skips, yeah. it, even though they might get to the tier that says free you know, smaller dashes, it, right, it, it, it doesn't actually unlock until you get to the level oh, requirement. Oh, it's in two yeah, hours? For, for okay, example, okay, like okay, the first okay. ash that you unlock in the battle pass right, is like bad, it's tier bad. eight, maybe. Tier eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, it has a level forty character requirement as an example. Just to make it really, really clear, like you will be able to use this in time, but immediately, like you need to continue to progress the, uh, your character and like, continue to level up, and then you'll be able to uh, use that accordingly. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, so. I can, Utilize I the new summary thing. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> the way. So we're, what we said. So we have a seasonal theme of the malignant, which has the mechanic of capturing malignant hearts and putting it into jewelry. We we use that to complete our season's journey. Our season journey is rewarding us favor. Uh -huh. Our favor we're then putting into the battle pass to get really cool cosmetics and transmogs. But also based on our level and our tier in the battle pass, we'll get smoldering ashes. We can use those smoldering ashes to apply a season's blessing, which allows us to use those urns and get sort of perks for during just this season that we've unlocked. That's correct. So the free person's experience, if you never want to pay a cent, um, you are still getting a lot of power out of the season journey and the, the free aspect, the free unlocks on the battle pass. So this is kind of an increase in power for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to spend money, just reinforcing that, that's unlocking more cosmetics. cosmetics yeah. And don't get me wrong, like, they're, they're amazing cosmetics. I am planning to pay to unlock them myself. But there's no power that comes from them. They are transmogs. Yes. They are not actual items. It's just a transmog you can place on your armor to look cool. They don't actually cause things to light on fire. Yeah, it's just reinforcing what we had talked about before, like even before launch and so forth, is that the battle pass itself, the pay, the anything that if you do pay for a battle pass, all the paid items are going to be cosmetics and and uh, for you, it's no if, pay for if, power. And if you bought the deluxe or the ultimate edition, this you know, you already will have a ability to make that a premium battle pass. You know, yeah. it still doesn't. So mm -hmm. that's great for them. So then let's talk a little bit about the the transitional side of it yeah, in terms okay. of how I, I, I go into this or what happens. So Definitely. there's a couple of different he things. Wants to look like, cool. um, <laughs> one is like there's a need. So there's a question. I guess we should talk about renown. Like one of the big okay. things yeah. that we hear the most about is hey, I spent a lot of time and I know I did too. I completed all my renown objectives, I've got full everything. Um, and now I hear, oh, I have to reroll my character in season. Do I have to go find all the altars of Lilith? Do I have to go all clear the fog of war again? Yeah, so I, I know we've talked about this in stream before, but it definitely bears repeating. So like when the when season one goes live, uh, players are going to be able to go basically carry over uh, like all of the fog of war that they've cleared. So everything, all the world they've explored on their characters in each of the zones, like the Fractured Peaks and Scotland and such, all of that's going to carry over, as well as all of the renown you have earned from all of that. Uh, okay. All of the okay. Can we bring up done. the screen? So yeah, basically, yeah. where we see areas discovered. Yeah. Let's say I've actually. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll say this is this person. Yeah, yeah. So right now, they've got 30 areas discovered, which is worth 150 renown. Right. So what's going to happen is in the season, I'm going to have 30 areas clear mm -hmm. inside of Kedjistan and I will have 150 renown already in the bank. And it will have unlocked whatever 150 renown will have unlocked. Absolutely, absolutely right, yep, absolutely right. Actually, I may uh, log so in tonight that, and finish off my little You're also gonna have already collected all of your altars of Lilith that you've got from your, uh, from your so, so, so the same thing here, that. so I will have 12 <laughs> will be done, appearing but... on my map immediately, mm -hmm. and I will have 120 renown in the bank with my other 100. So I'll have 270 renown already earned waiting for me to claim when I fire up the season. That's absolutely correct. <clears throat> so these are the advantages you get to start with. And like, if you look at like all I'm the uh, now you collect from the uh, from discovering all the areas, and getting, from getting to all level all 100, of the it's going to get you in each the of the stuff. zones. Uh, basically, uh, through the first two tiers, a little with the way through the third tier right. uh, for each of the uh, the zones for renown. So you get to start with like if you start at level one on day one of the new season with a brand new character, you'll start and you've done all of this work uh, with uh, with oh your previous uh, previous characters and previous playthroughs. You'll have five skill points to play with and then five extra potion charges. So you'll be at nine, sitting at nine potion charges. At right level away. one, you'll have yeah. five skill points and nine potions ready to oh, go. Okay. Absolutely. You just claim those things down, you're, you're good to go for the season. Yeah, so and your map video And your map, and your map so, so that, so that goes back to what Tim was teaming up earlier. When we think about, hey, I'm excited about the season, I want to prepare for it, I've got, what is it, this is the sixth today? Uh, today's the sixth, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I have 14 days, 14 days. I have two weeks. 
what should I be doing in these next two weeks? And yeah. so one was, I better get the campaign done because I really yeah, want to the campaign. <laughs> fight the malignant. But now, like, if you had places to go to, like, dig deep, dig deep on clearing the fog and dig deep on finding the altars because those are going to carry into this season. Yeah, all that stuff will carry over with you. Perfect. Okay, so then, Tim, how do I think about, I've got five, six alts, you know, my characters right now in the eternal realm. We're talking about carrying over progress based on your, how do I ensure that the progress, like the most progress character, it actually impacts my seasonal character? Like, yeah, Tim, tell us. I, yeah, I, I, it's a great question. Um, for various technical <laughs> implementation reasons, uh, we do actually need you to log in on existing characters to kind of self-migrate some of your data with this. Just it. saying. So this is something that Little we implemented shrines. based we on player feedback up. that we got. <laughs> so we put it in as quickly as we could. It is in for season one, but what we need you to do, once season one comes out, actually once the, the patch comes out, you don't have to soon. wait until July 20th. You can do this on July 18th, which is when the patch goes live. Mm -hmm. You should log in with characters that have the most progress. If you have a single character you've played, or if you have one character that, hey, on this one character I unlocked all the altars and cleared all the fog of war, awesome. You just have to log in with that person. When you log in with that character, all of that progress is going to be propagated across your entire account. It'll be saved as, hey, this is just unlocked for your whole account now. At that point, any character you log on on, uh, either one of your existing alts or any new character you make in Seasons, will now have all of that progress. So you have to do it once, Okay. But after you've done that, it is now saved to your account. And uh, just to reinforce, the experience you're going to have if you have unlocked all of these things, it takes a little bit of work, but if you've unlocked all of that, when you start that new seasonal character, wow, is that a lot of power. Uh, you are going to level pretty fast, because extra five skill points, extra five potions, you are ridiculously overpowered when you first start playing. Like, that is a lot of extra power. Yeah, so. accelerate you a little bit as you start. And uh, because that, that is a big caveat, like, we will be reminding everyone. I'm going to be, like, literally screaming from the rooftops. I know we will be posting it in our, our, our patch notes on uh, with that come out for the patch on the 18th. Just to remind people that, yes, log in to your characters beforehand. Even, yeah. if, even if you log in, like, if you jump into the season later on, you can log into those characters with the most amount of progress. Well, that's, so yeah, forth. that's the two things we should, because um, there'll probably be questions. But one is, I don't do that for whatever. I'm on, I, I go on vacation, I'm not playing, I come back, the season started. I can still log in my Eternal Realm character and have all that progress brought to the season, yes? Yes. Yeah. Even after the season started. So it's not like, oh, you only have 18 to 20 exactly. to get it those two days. It's, it's, yeah, it's there forever. <clears throat> Functionally, from this point forward, anytime you ever log in on a character, it will just check, like, hey, does this character have any progress that's not already credited on your account? Cool, I'm now crediting it to your account. Right. Yep. And so for, and that's for the seasonal. So if I think about the Eternal Realm, like, for example, my Necromancer has everything. I've, I've got the full bar on Renown on all five. Not not humble bragging. I'm just that's a point of fact. <laughs> humble bragging. Yeah, not humble bragging. Yeah, absolutely. So for the next five minutes, we're going to talk about. So this. let's talk about how good my necromancer is. No, what all I'm saying is I have a sork that has not had the same level of progress in the world. So right. after the after the 18th, when I log in my necro and I all that progress gets put to my account. When I go to log in my Sork next, even on the Eternal Realm, mm -hmm. my Sork will now have all the progress that my Necro has. Correct. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Yeah. And let's say, like, you know, <laughs> just to dive really deep into this. So let's say that you've got, I know, you've we got can, two different characters. We should do some sort of dev stream where we can talk and go deep. That's true, actually, yeah. So <laughs> let's say you've got, like, two characters you play. Like, one has done everything in the Fractured Peaks. He's uncovered like, everything in the Fractured Peaks and has uncovered, like, all the altars with Lobo You get another character right. who's gotten everything in Scott's Glen, who's unlocked, like, all the, all the field, uh, the, the Fog of War, has, has found all the altars with Lilith. If I log in on my Fractured Peaks character, uh, and uh, and just by doing that, all of that credit will now be transferred to my Scott's Glen character. When I log into my Scott's Glen character, all of that credit will be uh, applied to my Fractured Peaks characters. That at that point, all of the credit of the progress I made on either of those characters has been propagated to the entirety of my account. Right. So that's an, it becomes an and. It's not just, it's not just like yeah, it's and. It's not like it's not like the one account that has the most stuff, and then I want to log in that one. No, you want to log into every account that might have like tons of progress if they've made in different directions. Right. And I think to just again, hey, let's talk about managing expectations. Part, some of you might be saying, like, wow, that sounds a little clunky. And I think the, the point to, that Tim was trying to make was, uh, hey, prior to season one, we had oh, actually talked about that you wouldn't have any renowned progress carryover. You would have to go find the altars of Lilith. You would have to go clear the fog of war. Like, the original plan when launching the game, or prior to launching the game, the original plan that was that there was no transition of state from eternal realm to seasonal realm as part of this and so hearing the player feedback as we talked about seasons and hearing the response that we got about 
what, I have to find all the altars again? What, I have to find the, clear the map again? And wanting to make sure that we were listening to the players, yeah. we put in a system that allowed us to do that, but is not the most smoothest, most sophisticated, because we were doing it under very tight time constraints as easy, quickly as possible. Hey, did you want it done? <laughs> yeah. Did you want it done? <laughs> it's, it's, the answer is I'm yes. Just saying, I'm so. just saying, like, we, that wasn't the, the design from the start was not to do this, right. log in a character on the 18th and make it pass. Yeah, That's what we had to do to make it happen for season one. And this yeah. was this was based off of, you know, obviously player feedback that we had gotten yeah. since launch, so this is us implementing it yeah. quickly to, to you address you know, done, the feedback that it, you guys right? have been giving. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, I like a huge shout out our engineers are getting this all uh, implemented before uh, we like, actually jump into the season. Much so. like the Nightmare Dungeon teleport. Exactly. Like, they, miracles can happen and very quickly. So A lot of these actually end up with us going to an engineer and asking how long it would take to do it. And they'll, they'll, the first answer is to do it right. First and answer is they cry. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, well, what about to make it work right now? And always, if you told me you wanted to do this X months ago, I could have done it way easier yeah. because we implemented exactly, it completely right? differently. So... Yeah, we make it work, but sometimes it, you know, the, the fact that you have to log in to get the progress propagated, we would have made it a smoother version if we knew okay, months okay. ago. All right. Look, all right. It's actually right. not Maybe that big of a deal, Walter, to log into your one character. Just, just, just <laughs> okay, it's not going to happen. There it is. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, it's a live game. We know we need to, like, be. It's a live game. We know we are looking at. Uh, trying to make improvements based on the feedback that we're getting from players. We're playing the game ourselves. We're kind of seeing how everything is really feeling as it's all coming together with a giant audience of players playing and enjoying the game. Uh, we want to make sure that we are making the right changes as quickly as we can for the community. Some of those things are a lot harder than others. But like all the feedback, like Adam, you called out some things really early on at the program. Like you know, we're, we're hearing feedback about you know this and, and this, and like you know, inventory space. We talked about gems last time and things we want to do there. Uh, th we're trying to move very quickly in a lot of these things. Some of them are a lot more challenging technically to do than others. Uh, but we are rapidly moving on as many changes as we can because we are uh, fervently trying to make the very best version of Diablo 4 possible uh, in, on the, in, the in the fastest time frame that we can to deliver to, uh, to the player base. Because, right. you know, we're players too. We also want the same things. Uh, so just know that we're working hard. Uh, we, are, we care deeply. We love our engineers and, uh, and, all, and our designers and our producers and the staff that's been helping with like, all like, the, the optics and everything else. Um, we are trying to make sure that we are delivering a, a really, really high quality camera, does it feel experience like he's players like on a regular basis. Right uh, so just stick with us. Keep giving us that feedback. We're going to keep making adjustments as we go s between seasons and other updates. I can attest that whenever Joe would like to make a change yeah, based on right? feedback, I feel like he's like from Rio, quietly like judging me for like the comments first that I've is always, made. Can we do this immediately? <laughs> that is always the first request. Never like, hey, let's get this immediately when right? it makes sense and when it's comfortable. No, it's always. Could we do this yeah. right now? Is it possible for us to do this right now? Well, that's so, I, I want to move over to window where yeah. I just expect everything to be done in six seconds. But this is the yeah. thing about like why about doing it safely. Like w I think one of the sort of the genuine like, mistakes some people camera, can make right? is this only idea of like time is only right what it takes to it. implement, and it's not. It's time yeah. is also what it takes to test and and make sure that it's robust and stable. And so uh, oh, yeah, that's one sure, of the things sure. that like, I wouldn't be able to. When you look at the we have a follow the sun QA organization around the world, and that's what allows us to do future end boss, 15, yes. 16 hot fixes or this more now. Yeah. Um, and our yeah. big client patches is that yeah. that ability is not only can we get a you know, we have some heroic engineers who can turn stuff around very quickly, but we also have some uh, heroic QA teams around the world who are helping us make sure that when we make these changes, we're doing it in a safe way. So, uh, but I appreciate your patience on that. And uh, so this is exciting. Season one, season of the season malignant. Yes. Yeah. It's finally here. Yes. I'm waiting on you to build this for a long time. Yeah, so, yeah, in two weeks. And uh, again, like Tim it's had mentioned. It's not technically here for you, you all, but soon. Uh, soon, very soon. <laughs> As Tim had mentioned, uh, we will have a patch on the 18th for Diablo 4. That will contain all the uh, the changes that will be coming in with season one. Yep. Uh, if Tiffany Watt were here, who was on our campfire chat before, yep. she categorized our 103 patch as chonky. Right. I will categorize, in Tiffany Watt's words, the as term, yeah. super chonky for season one. It actually okay. is our largest, uh, or, or chonkster, as Tim called it. We, chonkers. I think we were, chonkers, chonkers, chonkers. 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 So yeah. we're going to pull up the Wikipedia entry and actually go through it, <laughs> the history of chonkers. I uh, But uh, yeah, it is very big. Um, so we will have notes up for that. Uh, and again, oh players uh, can prepare Massive for season again. one by uh, you know completing the campaign, for sure. Yep. Uh, the campaign, uh, and making sure, the yeah, clear fog of war, discover the map, and of course, get all your, uh, get all your altars. So. Uh, lots to come for uh, Diablo 4. Okay. And then, again, we also have um, 
uh, just more improvements that will be in that patch uh, with class uh, our, our balance yeah, changes to you know uh, bug fixes to you name it I can go on uh, there's even um, some reward changes coming uh, for um, some uh, nightmare and helltide uh, related activities as well some end game activities because I've been hearing some some feedback regarding uh, like hey it would be great if we can get like maybe better rewards with, with some of these activities and so I know some of those changes are coming in that actual update as well but um, I know we want to do Q&A. We do. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And this is a live stream, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, I know we get sometimes people are like, I don't know if this is live. No, this is totally live. Um, <laughs> so we're actually going to be bringing in. Uh, 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 we're actually going to kick off Rod because we're done with him. No, I'm just kidding. Rod is actually just I'm actually going to go and annoy you from the side. I know. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, uh, Rod's going to jump over here. We're actually going to bring back in uh, Chris and Ryan from the Immortal team. Um, who will be jumping in oh, I, here? I think you're supposed to open that chair. I didn't. I didn't do oh, my yeah. job. Rod, Rod did. <laughs> I didn't do my Rod, job. Rod had one job and failed to do it. I failed um, to open the chair. So we're going to oh, bring I these guys that, in. I know that, we have um, questions uh, queued up from from different people uh, in Twitch chat. So if you guys have questions, of course, feel free to drop in questions. Chris and everything. is not quite in. You need to switch. Oh. Oh, I, I need to scooch too scooch because I think I'm, I'm yeah, I think we like, scooch a little bit more. Live okay. television. We're yeah, scooching yeah, yeah. live, and we're scooching live. This, scooching. Live so here's the problem. We also this, the production team hates me. Uh, <laughs> I I, I want to give a shout out to our, our our production group behind here because I literally go like, oh, we're only going to have like two people, and then we continue to add people, and then Rod wanted to be in it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so now suddenly we're up to like 20 people, and this room can't hold this many people. So I apologize. Um, yeah, they are okay. angels, and they deal with me um, but uh, we do have some questions um, and I will be kind of going back and forth in between both of them but we do oh oh perfect we do have some questions oh. up here someone's also calling me which is awful at this time <laughs> um, uh, quick question any updates around this is for d4 specifically any updates around uh, respecting characters yeah so uh, right now there are I think that there's a few different concerns we're hearing from the community there's the uh, there's the general cost of uh, respecting characters okay. um, and then there is at various stages of the game uh, and then there is the uh, the actual experience of respecting a character, particularly when you're deeper into the Paragon system. Like that takes a takes a lot of effort. Uh, so the, we have uh, longer term plans on the on the uh, on the user experience side, like the on the menu side. Things we wanted to improve the flow of allowing players to respect their characters. These are things we we are we're actively investigating. We have designs for things we're looking to add into uh, into seasons in the future, but we don't have a date that we're committing to today for okay, that. Okay. Cool. Um, and in terms of the uh, the actual uh, the actual price of that, we're we're evaluating things on like the uh, the gold economy, and we're taking a look at like what players are doing on a regular basis. We're not making any fundamental structural changes to the, uh, today uh, at this time, uh, but we are because we're satisfied with where things feel like in the one to fifty. Uh, one thing we will be adding though is, is as part of seasons, there is now a new reward that you can collect as you're going through the uh, the, the season journey at the end of each season, uh, called the Scroll of Amnesia, which once you collect a Scroll of Amnesia, you can use that one time to basically reset the entirety of a character all in one go for, for no gold cost at all. Oh, that's uh, nice. So these can be like pretty fun things to bring back with you to the Eternal Realm if you want to use for future playthroughs or for, uh, for that character or another character. So we're gonna, we want to make sure that we're like slowly uh, adding a few of these as the player's progressing through the experience. Kind of make that a little bit easier for players to go through. And that Scroll of Amnesia is yeah. everything, everything. It's all that's, your that's skills, nice. all, all your skills, paragon, everything so. goes to zero. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, for uh, Immortal, uh, we have a question from, I'm reading everyone's names, 8 Miles West. Uh, how much will the Blood Knight cost? I, I know we covered this uh, early on, but if you guys want to reiterate. Yeah, the Blood yeah. Knight will cost nothing. The Blood nothing. Knight is free. It's free. So if you're a new Immortal player, uh, or you're a, a existing Immortal player, you can literally jump in, start playing uh, the Blood Knight. Uh, on day one, uh, which is on July Level 13th. So, uh, <laughs> and of course, you can play through the campaign, and we had mentioned that, that has would be my essentially luck. custom VO and everything associated mm -hmm. with it. That's right. Um, for D4, I, I should be more prepared with these. Um, <laughs> that's usually the that's, that, that's, that's usually, a safe, that's, safe statement all the time. Is you should be more prepared. We have Rod <laughs> judging me off screen right here, and I'm just like, it's awesome. perfect. A little, um, little side story, real quick. So we have a thing in design called design armor, where like as you're about to like talk about an idea with something, you're like, this might be a really bad idea, but and that's you putting up your shield, saying this is my design armor. Saying I know that this might be really really bad, but we're talking about it anyway. So yes, I should probably be more prepared. But here we go. That's your design armor. Um, question from. Yes. Uh, Big Lorna. You terrible. committed to saying Big, the names. Big, I know I did. We don't want uh, anyone to suggest that these are not real questions. Yeah, from Big Lorna. Uh, will seasonal mechanics be added to the uh, Eternal Realm after the season ends? 
That I think that's a, something we didn't actually clarify fairly well. That is a great question that actually gets asked internally as well a lot. Like, <laughs> hey, this is awesome. Are we going to keep it around forever? Uh, initially, no. Like, initially, the My version question, of the Malik mechanics that you're seeing you are not planned to show up in the Eternal Realm. However, we are reserving sure? the right as developers that know. if we <laughs> see something cool and we think, wow, this is just fantastic, this should just be part of the game, yeah. that we will just make it part of the game. So it is absolutely <laughs> an option. Some mechanics you might see in future seasons might be that way right away. We might be planning that, hey, this will show up in Eternal Realm right away. Others will evaluate them as that. we okay. play them and then see if this is far? working really well. Okay. This is something that we want to integrate with the Eternal version of the game. Yeah, I want to, I want to stay on this just one second longer. That's not suggest that we're not going to be, as part of the seasons, uh, intentionally using those update opportunities to create You're content okay. for the base game. Like yes. stuff that will persist beyond... Uh, the uh, the 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 end of the season, the uh, but we really do well, want to hone sense. in on the idea that we're, we're like Malignant Hearts are very Rogue. powerful, as we talked about before. They're really really cool. They're very they're very exciting. We can't add yeah. something exciting like that every season if it's expected to all last. Also. If the game's going to be a complete mess, right? So we're not we're not going to do that. <laughs> That's what, really what, we, we, what we would end up needing to do is all of those things would be extremely incremental in terms of what they offered to the players over the, over Rogue the course of time, uh, and it would make the game extremely it's extraordinarily going, going. dense in terms of what the players expected to do on a regular basis. And to understand. We know that there's opportunities to extend things like add more endgame features. We know okay. that there's more content that we want to add to the game in general. That like everybody's going to need forever. And we're going to be looking at those opportunities as we go. But things like Malignant Hearts, we don't want to have something of that size in Season 1 then add something of similar size in Season 2 and then Season 3 and Season 4. Because the game is going to get very extremely, extremely dense and difficult for players to really navigate. We want to be able to like, take these things away, introduce new ideas. But having known what worked really, really well with Malignant Hearts and what stuff we could maybe have improved upon, we get to take all those ideas forward. It's also part of the cool factor of the season is that when you're going in, these malignant hearts, it's there for the season. So even, let, let's take the, uh, a player that, let's say, uh, doesn't like to play alts except of the same class. I just love playing Barbarian. And, you know, I played, I have three different Barbarians already on Eternal because well, it's the perfect class. if you're a player and all you play is rogues and all you do is build rogues. There, there might be a lot of those too. Uh, but let's say a Barbarian, that's my hypothetical, I'm sticking with it. So I'm a Barbarian yeah. lover and I've made all these Barbarians. Season one is still an exciting time to make a new Barbarian because we have all of these new malignant powers that allow you to make radically new builds that are completely different from Barbarians you played in the past. Your end game is going to be very different. Yeah, so that snow. excitement goes it's away if we just say like, oh, here. all of these powers just exist in the game forever. The whole idea is that no, every season is a fresh new experience that gives you builds that did not exist previously. So the idea is some of that stuff is always designed to go away. Yeah. So, so, I mean, one of the things is Rod off camera speaking. Rod, Rod. off camera. Hey, yeah. voice right. of Joe, Whoa. Yes. maybe speak to the fact exactly. that everybody starts at the same place the season is one of the benefits so that people aren't like a year behind when they go to play season four. That's uh, how yeah, that's an important part too. of this as well. When we, one of the reasons we really like the idea of letting players start back fresh and have like an economy reset, players really jumping back in the experience at level one with characters, is it allows us to focus on making sure the entirety of that journey is really engaging and exciting for players to, uh, to go through. And we want to make sure, like, by the end of the first session, for example, like, you're getting exposed to, like, the new, uh, like, the new features and content available that we're introducing in that season. That everything, everything feels like it's balanced in such a way uh, that players can really enjoy uh, the new things that we're adding and the way that they're kind of intelligently mixed with the, uh, the rest of the features in the game itself. So that, like, that we think of that experience is part of what makes a Diablo game a Diablo game anyway. It's like making a new character, uh, you know, getting those mm -hmm. item drops, like building, uh, like building up towards the end. Uh, with regards to like, the way that we're, we, we decide to conduct our efforts in seasons for Diablo 4, we think this is a really, really, like the, the prime example of the way that we can make this work. I just, but I wanted you to hit on the point. Well, the saying, like, if you're somebody, somebody that likes to only game, play the same class... Yeah. So and then you use like barbarian as an example. Not, like, like, if, if you have like three different yeah. barbarians, somebody, like, somebody kind like, of I'm thing. gonna mess with the camera people. Can you? Yeah. You can't even do it, can you? You can't even get there. All we can do is I can just have my talking stomach. Oh, hey, uh, what's yeah. going on? Talking <laughs> stomach. The, you know, the thing that we're talking about is that we want again the game is a live service. The game's gonna live for years. We want somebody who buys the game a year from now to not feel like they're a year behind when yeah. it comes. To, so one of the benefits of seasons is in season four. On day one, you and I are both level one. I bought it that day. You have owned the game for a year. We're in the same place. We can play together and have fun together. And so as opposed to everybody from this moment on is now falling behind, Seasons allows us to have that fresh start for everybody, right? right. Yeah, that's actually, I, I could have nice. put it better myself. That serves as a really, really good opportunity for us to make sure the players have a starting point together when you want to come in a little bit later into the game experience. If you take in a, like a season or two off because something else mm -hmm. came out, you know, we want to make sure that it feels like, yeah, any, whenever you... The most important thing for us in Seasons, like kind of going off script in a different way now, is that like when you're playing Seasons and you're playing Diablo 4, you're having a great time. 
And when you've reached all the goals and done the things that we think you think are really, really uh, important, and you want to go like take a break to go play something else for a little while, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. We do the same thing. <laughs> you know, <don't laughs> right? but when you but when a season rolls and there's new things for you to come check out, that's a great time to come back. Particularly if you had a good time playing before, that's exactly when you should come back and check out Diablo Four. So you know what he's saying though? Yeah, it's sorry. fine to yeah, take I'll a break, but when the, when you're going to get the disappointed dad. There's a non-zero chance that I'm going to play WoW for a while, but it's great it's to like, know yes, there's a point that I can come break. back to Diablo Four and, and everybody's going to like quietly judge you. Uh, question here from Jeffrey Allen, and d didn't specify the D4 or DI, so I'm actually going to ask both because I think this is relevant to both. Also, I... Why well, do you have a new mic? I, don't, I actually don't know. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah. Uh, uh, two mics, guys. I'm very... I'm, I'm very... I'm very, I'm very, I'm very yeah. you, have, you have me in stereo. Um, uh, can you say which cosmetics will be transferring um, uh, between characters? So, so for instance, like... Uh, uh, for Diablo Immortal, we'll, we'll ask this specifically for Diablo Immortal, and then we'll talk about uh -huh. uh, Diablo Four. But like, I feel like um, he's speaking to me in regards like, I mean, we to all, we all uh, transferring games, uh, cosmetics. Like, is, if is if you ended up buying a cosmetic in, in Diablo Immortal, does that actually side? also appear in the Blood Knight? <laughs> so, but, like, cosmetics seasons, purchased like, no, um, no. prior to the Blood Knight's release will not be retroactive. However, the um, sorry, what was the Mother's Lament set. Hatred's Heritage. Hatred's Heritage will be available for the Blood Knight. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So uh, going forward, there will be now new cosmetics available for the Blood Knight, just as they are for all the other classes yes. in Immortal. Um, and then I guess for D4, uh, will cosmetics be transferring yeah. uh, to Seasons, and, and uh, will they need to be reobtained? I know this was like a question that we get a lot from people in regards to transmogs, and, and if you salvage specific stuff, how does that uh, work between uh, characters from Eternal and Seasonal Realms? Yeah, Blue Fest is all transferring over with you when you go into the uh, the new season. And obviously, every cosmetic set that you're purchasing, you get the store, and uh, if you develop past that stuff, also is going to be carrying over with you. Okay, yes, cool. so if you ever unlock anything, your whole account has access to it forever, is the current functionality. Nice. I say I shouldn't say it that way. It sounds like we're going to change it. Yeah, that is the first ever. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Uh, Nightmare, uh, this is from uh, Kincho Kimo. Uh, this is Nightmare Teleport was great, but why can't we just teleport right into dungeons rather than just to the entrance? Uh, so this one I think is interesting because uh, Nightmare, uh, the, we obviously in incorporated the, the teleport here in 103. It was uh, another thing that we had talked about where it was community feedback that we had gotten and, and the team jumped on it really quickly to implement it in, in a specific way. We have been seeing a lot of feedback in regards so to players nice. having to teleport outside of dungeons and kind of go through like a couple loads screens it was a quick i know implementation from the team and everything so i know it's it's something that we've been hearing uh from our side and uh, it's something that we're going to be looking at more here in the future for for optimizing and and, and making sure that we can implement I hope they maybe add it for other way, dungeons also. Um, from like from some of the features too. that we've been just kind of adding in really quickly um on immortal we have uh was there some sort of Castlevania inspiration uh, with, with the Blood Knight? Uh, look at, looking very, very uh, similar to, to some popular characters from that franchise. Um, I, very pretty vampire-ish people, but not vampires. Uh, I think we've discovered that. You did, King, you did. <laughs> we can turn off Rod's mic now, so that's, that's, that's all we need to do. But yeah, was, it, was there any inspiration kind of thrown with the, the Blood Knight? I think, you know, when you're working with a tropic idea in fantasy, like vampires, you know, you take inspiration from all over. The spear thing puts us in mind of Vlad the Impaler, the aesthetic, you've already talked about some potential references, but I think for us it's as much like what we take out as what we leave in. We don't want the Blood Knight to feel like a grab bag of all vampiric myths. They are very specifically grotesque, blood, shadow, knightly weapons oriented, and so there were things like turning into mist, like turning into wolves, etc., that we immediately said, hey, these need to be off the table. And so in that regard, I think there's there's a lot of familiar that we're channeling, but there's also like a very dialed in identity for the class. Awesome. Everybody knows that it's necromancers that turn into mist. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, in regards to Diablo 4, uh, we have, uh, will you guys be nerfing or buffing in the middle of seasons or will you be making changes after the season starts? 
Yeah, it's a really good question. So, okay. oh, this is from from Gothic, by the way. So there you go. Okay, I just so wanted to real person. So <laughs> yeah. the uh, so the yes, yeah, so this is a good question. So we made a number of adjustments during the preseason period to make sure that we're bringing some uh, builds back into where we expect them to be uh, functionally, uh, and performance wise. Uh, when we go into the season release, we do want to create structured moments in time that we're going to be talking about. I think more uh, in future streams. Uh, when we expect like buffs and nerfs to happen, so we have like a, we have like a regular uh, set of like patches that are going to be occurring after the uh, the season is released, where we have like a better schedule like in cadence when, we, when we're talking about these things. Mm -hmm. uh, we really want to try to reserve um, like big nerfs and big buffs for only like extreme outlier cases, uh, and really, we're th things were like really 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 damaging uh, the the end game experience for a number of players. Mm -hmm. So we want to try to keep that more constrained, and we also want to have just fewer general. Um, like off cycle, uh, up, like uh, balance updates and things. So we're, we're kind of keeping things more into this weekly cadence, like we talked about. So yeah, things will be pretty stable throughout the course of the season, unless yeah, if, if one of the malignant powers. I, I know I joked about them being broken, uh, but if if the zone lights on fire when you use a malignant power, yeah, we're gonna patch that. They're all pretty uh, awesome. But otherwise, we're gonna try and keep things stable. Um, I know we're we're running close on time because we're we're planning on this stream to be ninety minutes, and we're one minute away. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, Lightening off a few questions. Um, oh, okay. uh, the, a big question within chat Let's is go. obviously about stash space, which is something that we kind of just talked about uh, or a little bit earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll say real quickly though, yeah. like we 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 definitely hear everybody about this. We are talking a lot about what we need to do with this. We've got good plans of things we can do to improve the situation. I know it's frustrating to hear me say like, "What you were able to do this? Like you could be able to do like nightmare dungeons this quickly." But like the reality is like we are moving really really quickly on this, and we're gonna be trying to uh, provide more space in the future. Okay. Figuring out how like, we're going to get that accomplished. Yeah, and uh, also one thing to note is I know we talked about during campfire chats about how um, like uh, gems and so forth uh, were going to be part of the uh, part of materials uh, mm -hmm. yeah. in the future. So uh, I know when that hits, like that will obviously free up a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's lots of different ways to kind of like slice like away at this problem. That's like yeah. an example <laughs> of what we're trying to do to start trying to, to mitigate this a bit. Um, and then uh, uh, Jim, the Q guy, asked uh, how much time between seasons. Still wants to level up his main. Uh, so in between seasons, obviously, really uh, there is. We're, we we had talked about Four seasons, seasons lasting year? three months. It's a minimum of twelve weeks. Sometimes yes. it might be a little longer, but you always Correct. have at least twelve weeks to complete your season. Correct. Yeah. So I you guys will hear the calendar dates, right? But yeah. You, so you guys will hear like no matter what within or like w once we hit that three month period, you'll you'll start to hear news about the next season actually hitting and everything like okay. that. Cool. Um, and then uh, this one, I guess for for Rod, are oh, there any plans oh, on new classes coming to Diablo Four? We've yeah, just Rod. heard about the Blood Knight, so there. Are now <laughs> we have yeah, nothing to announce at this time. <laughs> oh, wow. right. that was very strange. Yeah, Rod, Rod, Rod sitting off camera can can answer that perfectly. So, uh, so yeah, that, I think uh, we're going to wrap it here for today. Uh, obviously, we talked a lot about uh, all the stuff with uh, Diablo Immortal for the Blood Knight coming out on July 13th. Uh, we also have uh, for Diablo 4 Season 1, Season of the Malignant, I'm which so is going to be, uh, the patch will be on, the, on July 18th, and then the actual season starts on July 20th. Uh, we do actually have two blogs, one on the on DiabloImmortal.com and one on Diablo4.com. They'll be uh, going live either right now or immediately after this live stream. They'll have all the details and information that we just talked about here on the stream. Um, oh, and uh, oh, yeah. yeah, lots of stuff Amazing. coming up here for Diablo. Patch this afternoon. Oh yes, and there's a patch this afternoon. What You'll be before? seeing, oh, I forgot, that's what I have to do immediately <laughs> after the stream. I was trying to get out of it, guys. Uh, but uh, we will have a patch. Uh, we'll have patch notes up on uh, Diablo4.com. We have a patch article that will actually know um, and we'll be updating people when that patch does hit. It is a climb patch. It will require a download. It will be on all platforms. Okay. And uh, yeah, lots of Diablo stuff coming up here in the next few weeks. It kind of really makes excited. sense. Happy Diablo family. Yeah. Tons of stuff like... coming up. I know we will be raiding two uh, okay. Diablo content creators immediately after the stream. One on Twitch, which is Barricade, and the other one on YouTube, which is Kill Switch. So make sure to tune in to those guys. Uh, and thank you guys so much. Hey, Thanks for tuning yes. in to uh, the Diablo Developer Update live stream. And uh, from everyone here on the Diablo team, we hope Let's you have a wonderful go. weekend. Bravo, Listen, bravo. Woo, woo, woo. Amazing. Yeah, it was a great stream. I'm so hyped.